Hi folks, in this video we discuss metalogic, in particular the metalogical notions of soundness and completeness. First, let's talk about the distinction between logic and metalogic. So far in this class, we've been constructing formal systems and we use them to study reasoning in our everyday lives in a natural language like English. For example, we might take an argument from English, translate it into bool or prop, and then do a formal proof of it to indeed show that that form of reasoning is valid. When we do that, we are using our logical system and the object of our study is reasoning in our everyday lives. But we could also step back and actually reflect on logic itself as our object of study. What we might wanna do is study those formal logical systems themselves, rather than use those systems to study reasoning in our everyday lives. That is what metalogic is. So when we do metalogic, we're not doing proofs in bool or prop, we are doing proofs about bool or prop. Uh, this is similar to the way in which you might study a mathematical system like geometry and see what powers it can do, what it can reveal about um, two-dimensional figures, for example. Now, let's see if you've uh, gleaned some of the concepts from the textbook of metalogic. So here's an argument. Um, there's a proof of x to y, therefore x entails y. What I want you to do is assess that inference. Do you think that soundness, completeness, neither or both justify that inference? So pause your videos now and see if you can decide. Okay, let's talk about the answer. This inference is justified by the metalogical theorem called soundness. And the first thing I have to tell you is logicians really messed up and they used the same word for two totally different things. And unfortunately, I can't make them all change. And so we just have to learn the way that logicians talk about this. The word sound of when it's talk to, talking about an argument is what we learned previously. A sound argument has true premise as it, and is valid. Now we're talking about a sound formal system. And so soundness here is talking about something different. It's talking about formal systems, not arguments. And that might help you remember to keep the two concepts distinct. Because a sound formal system is not the same thing as a sound argument. They're very different. This is what soundness means when we're talking in metalogic. It means whenever there's a proof in our formal system from P to Q, P actually does entail Q. In a sense, what it says is all of our proof rules are sound. They're good ones. They don't, they're always reasoning validly. They're not going to let us reason invalidly. So the meaning here is related to soundness of arguments, but really it's talking about formal systems, so it's a distinct concept. All right, let's, let's look at some symbols, some ways we can talk about this more precisely. We've used this double bar arrow symbol before. Remember, this is one half of logical equivalence. If this was going in both directions, it would say P is equivalent to Q. If it's going just in one direction, it means P logically entails Q. And now what I'm gonna do is tell you that we can subscript this notion because maybe that logical entailment just uses the true functional connectives. Like when, when I have the sentence P conjunction Q and that logically entails Q, that's a true functional entailment. The T just stands for tautologically, sort of like a tautology, being tautologically true or tautologically false. It's that same concept of just having to do with true functional logic. Now, the new symbol that you're seeing here is this little thing called a turnstile, because it's like when you're at the, at the Washington State Fair and you go through the turnstiles, it's this little thing. But more, more easily, what this should remind you of is a little proof bar. When we do proofs in that graphical space, we have a vertical line and a horizontal line. So imagine this is like a tiny little proof bar pointing toward the queue. What it says is there is a formal proof in bool or in prop from the premise P to the conclusion true, uh, the conclusion Q. And when we subscript it with a T, what it means is that is only using the rules of true functional logic, like our true functional connectives. So far, you have only learned true functional connectives. So this includes everything you've learned in bool or prop, but this is preparing you uh, in the, in, later on in the quarter, we're going to learn some formal systems that are uh, more complicated uh, and we'll learn some different subscripting for them. So, so what these symbols allow us to do is formulate two different concepts, two different conditionals. We can say, what if P entails Q? If P entails Q, then there's a formal proof from P to Q. Or conversely, we can look in the other direction. What if there's a formal proof from P to Q, like in bool or prop? Then P really does logically entail Q. These two conditionals are the two key metalogical theorems. These describe properties of the formal systems we've created so far. So completeness is the top one. In a sense, what it says is, I don't need to add any more rules to my system. They're complete because anytime the argument actually is valid, I can prove it's valid in my system. I've got enough rules. My rules are complete. 
And soundness, in a sense, says my rules will never lead me astray because any time I can prove something according to my formal rules, it indeed is valid. All my rules are sound. They're, they're only going to preserve um, valid arguments. Okay, let's see if you can evaluate one more argument uh, that I give you. Let's say I tell you this. There's no proof from X to Y. Therefore, X doesn't entail Y. What can you infer about this? Uh, or what allows you to infer this? Any, which of those metallurgical theorems? So pause your videos and see if you can answer this. Okay, the answer here is completeness, uh, but you have to be careful because it's the antecedent. This might look like the antecedent of soundness, but it's not. Completeness says if p entails q, then there's a formal proof of p to q. But remember the contrapositive of this. Anytime you see conditionals now, you should always keep the contrapositive clear in your mind. Because really what I'm using is the contrapositive of completeness is there is no formal proof from P to Q. That's what we, and allows me to infer that P does not entail Q. Now, another thing in meta logic, besides defining these new concepts like soundness and completeness, what we also do is we prove soundness and completeness for these systems. And if you look in the textbook, I explain how those proofs work. This class, introductory logic, isn't, uh, we don't have enough time to actually prove those in, uh, in 10 weeks. But if you take an advanced logic class, um, then you'll actually prove these things hold. Our systems, Boole and Prop, and indeed all of the systems we study in this class are, in, are sound and complete. Okay, thanks.